In June 2011, the IE2 regulations were brought in to draw a line in the sand between the older, less efficient motor technology and the new, improved efficiency solutions. However, the market didn't stop there and it's already looking towards the introduction of the IE3 classification in 2015 and also beyond the proposed IE4 Super Premium Efficiency classification. I'm here to speak to Marcus Cutney of Bauer Gear Motor, who's responsible for the efficiency solutions within the company. He's brought along his premium efficiency permanent magnetic synchronous motor and he's going to explain how this test works. So Marcus, could you just explain what we've got here and what you're going to show us today? With this small test unit, we have coupled two motor technologies. The first one is on the left side, it's the asynchronous motor in the IE3 efficiency class, and on the right side, the PMSM motor, the permanent magnetic synchronous motor in the IE4 efficiency class. And what's this going to show us today? We can show different speed and different torque of the motors, and we can generate with the one motor a torque and with the other motor a brake torque. So we can show you if the motor is, or the behavior of the motor in different ranges of the speed and torques. Well, before we begin the test, could you start off by explaining the difference between an IE2, an IE3, and an IE4 motor? A typical IE2 motor is an asynchronously motor and has an aluminum cage rotor in it. The IE3 motor can be also be an asynchronous motor with an aluminum cage rotor or with a copper cage rotor. New, our new technology is the permanent magnetic synchronous motor that reaches the new energy efficiency IE4. But you also can reach the IE3 energy efficiency and avoid the oversizing of the motor. Our first test is to show you the PMSM against the asynchronous motor in the rated speed of 50 Hz without a load. In the display we can see what the asynchronous motor produce and of energy. On the top left side you see the power of the motor in IE2 asynchronous and we can do the same test with our PMSM in IE4 and so we can compare the two motors what energy efficiency we get out. On this display you now see the PMSM motor in IE4. He is turning the same unit with the same rated speed of about 50 Hz and the power that the motor needs is about 0.09 kilowatt. So we have a difference of 40 watts. And this means that we have an energy efficiency of about 30%. That shows a, a very definite difference and real life savings then between the IE4 and the current IE2 classification. So you're making a definite saving in terms of energy use by going for the PMSM motor. But what would you say if people were concerned about the initial procurement cost? Would it, over the course of its lifetime, would it pay for itself? Usually the PMSM motor is in I4 and you can, we can reach the I4 only when we use rare earth materials in the rotor. These are very special magnets, they are very strong and you don't have any losses in the rotor, so we can reach the I4. This is the reason why the PMSM is more expensive than the I2 motor, but the customer have a big advantage that the motor is only more expensive about 5 to 10 percent. The break-even point you can reach more quicker when you have applications that is running continuously. So in some applications we get a break-even point after one year. We did a real test in a waste and water treatment plant near Munich and we put the PMS motor on the same gearbox, it was a disk thickener application, and compared the asynchronous motor in IE2 to the PMSM motor in IE4. And the result was very positive, we get an energy efficiency of about 40%. So that was um, some 40% savings then on a real world application where the only difference was the gear motor. They'd use the same inverter drive and the same gearbox. And seeing 40% energy saving in a real world application compared to the 30 saving on the demo rig that they've set up for us now really does go to show that the IE4 motors can have a real benefit when installed in the right application in the real world. And it does explain why many manufacturers are looking to beat and extend the IE2 and future IE3 regulations by moving forward through to IE4 and offering their customers benefits.